In the last lecture, you learned about the legacy 7 mode operating system and its scalability limitations. In this lecture, you'll learn about the clustered on top hardware architecture and how it fixes those problems. Several years ago, NetApp were aware of the scalability limitations that they had with the 7 mode operating system. And they really had a couple of choices as to how they were going to fix that. They could either redevelop the 7 mode operating system to overcome those scalability limitations, or they could just go out and buy another company. And upgrading 7 mode would have required a complete rewrite, so it made more sense to do an acquisition. So that's what they did. They acquired Spinnaker Networks in 2003, and with that, they got their clustered storage operating system capability. So a quick refresher of what we have covered already in the last lecture. Cluster data on tap is also known as C mode or C dot. And when it was originally released, it had less features than seven mode. That's why NetApp ran them both at the same time. On tap was available in both those flavors. So when you bought a fast system, you could either choose seven mode for the full feature set, or you could choose clustered on tap for the scalability. With each new release of ONTAP, NetApp were working on getting those features into clustered ONTAP as well. And they finally did it in ONTAP 8.3. So ONTAP 8.2 was the last version where both flavors were available. Because they had practical feature parity in ONTAP 3, at that point, 7 mode was dropped and you could only get on tap in the clustered version. Because there was only the one version, there was no need to keep the separate data on tap 7 mode and cluster data on tap terminology. So from 8.3, on tap is simply known as on tap. When we're talking about on tap, we're talking about that same cluster data on tap that was there before version 8.3 as well. So let's have a look at the hardware architecture in our clustered systems. And you'll see that to begin with, it's really the same as a seven mode system, which is not very surprising considering that both operating systems could run on the same hardware. So you see the hardware here, we've got an HA pair, exactly the same as we would have in a seven mode system. We've got two controllers there, controller one and controller two. They're both connected to each other's disk shelves to give controller redundancy. And we've got an HA connection between the two controllers. Where cluster data on tap is different is that you can add additional controllers to the cluster. The controllers are also known as nodes in a clustered system. So controller and node, it means exactly the same thing. So now you can see we've also got controller three and controller four, and they are also an HA pair. So controller three is connected to controller four's disks for redundancy, and controller four is also connected to controller three's disks for redundancy. Now with those connections to the disk shelves, we don't connect every controller to every other controller's disk shelves. You see that one and two are connected to each other and three and four are connected to each other, but we don't have one, two, three, and four all connected to each other's disk shelves because to do that, we would need loads of parts on the back of the shelves and we would have cables going everywhere. So they're arranged in HA pairs. So that gives you redundancy for a single point of failure. If controller one goes down, controller two can take over for it. And if controller three goes down, controller four can take over it. Okay, so we've got our two HA pairs, but we need these to be in a single system. So we need all of the controllers to also be connected together. And this is where clustered on tap is different than how it works in seven mode, in that we have the addition of a cluster interconnect network. This is an ethernet network 
and every controller is connected to that cluster interconnect network. So they can share configuration and run state information with each other over the cluster inter interconnect. Data can also go over there as well, as you'll see in a second. So with the clustered operation, again, in seven mode and in cluster mode, disks are always owned by one and only one controller. A difference is though that in seven mode, whenever a client access disks owned by controller one, that traffic would go through controller one only. It didn't also go through controller two. A difference with clustered on tap is that the client connections can come in on any controller in the entire cluster. So looking here, we do have data one owned by controller one, and it is serving that data right now. But because we've also got the cluster interconnect, when a client connects in to read or write the data one, it can come in over controller one. It can also come in over controller two as well. If the client hits controller one, then it's going to go directly through it to the disk shelves. If a client hits controller two, then it will go via the cluster interconnect. That does add a tiny amount of latency, but it is minimal. With the cluster on tap, you can also mirror your data throughout the cluster as well. In this case, if a client comes in and hits controller two and data one is on both controller one and controller two, it will be served directly by controller two. So that avoids that little bit of latency you would have going over the cluster interconnect. And obviously it adds some additional redundancy as well. Okay, so let's look at how clustered on tap is more scalable. So clustered data on tap, which is just known as on tap now, can scale to 24 nodes when only NAS protocols are being used. If you're running SAN protocols, then it can scale to 12 nodes. So if you're running just NAS, it is 24. If you're running only SAN, it's 12. And if you're running SAN and NAS, that is also 12. With ONTAP, it can support all the different protocols at the same time. A single cluster can be scaled to a maximum of 138 petabytes. That's as I record this video, but that will grow over time. And disk shelves and nodes can be added non-disruptively. So you can start off with a small system, maybe just a couple of controllers, and then you can grow that over time as your needs grow. And as you are adding additional controllers or shelves or disks, it's going to be non-disruptive to your current operations. Let's have a look at that capacity scaling with a diagram. So you can see in the picture here, I've got just a single controller and that is a supported configuration. You can have a single node cluster. It's not very commonly done, definitely not with hardware configurations because if you've only got a single controller, that's obviously a single point of failure. And typically, we're going to want to have higher redundancy than that. More plausible, a more likely situation would be maybe a single node of an on tap select node that's running in a branch office. Okay, so you can have a single controller, but more likely, you will have at least two controllers in your cluster. And as you can see here, controller one and controller two are configured as an HA pair for each other. Maybe this company grow later and they want to expand the cluster, they can do that by adding another pair of nodes. Now, the only way you can have an odd number of nodes in your cluster is if it's a single node cluster. If you've got more than one node, then you have to add them in pairs. So you can have a single node, you can have two nodes, you can have four nodes, you can have six and eight and so on. You couldn't have five or seven nodes in your cluster. So now we have got a four node cluster with the two HA pairs there. And then maybe this company grow even more. And at that point, they add another four nodes again. So now we've got an eight node cluster with four HA pairs making up that cluster. So controller one and controller two are HA pairs for each other, three and four, five and six, and seven and eight. You can build the cluster all the way up to 12 nodes if you're running a SAN protocol on there. If you're only running NAS, then you can go up to 24 nodes. For our operational scaling, a cluster is managed as a single system. 
So you've got that single point of management there makes it very easy. The cluster can also be virtualized into different virtual storage systems called SVMs, Storage Virtual Machines, or vServers. vServers is the old name. The new name is Storage Virtual Machines. They both mean exactly the same thing. SVMs appear as a single system to clients. So you can have the one hardware platform, and on there you could have a Department A SVM, and you could also have a Department B SVM as well. To the clients, Department A looks like a separate physical storage system, and D Department B looks like a separate physical storage system, even though they're actually virtualized and running on the one hardware platform. And SVM level administrators can be created with access to only their own SVM. So it's a full multi-tenant solution. Now, 7Mode did support multi-tenancy as well, but it was really bolted on afterwards and it was a bit clunky. With Clustered on Tap, that was designed from the beginning to be a multi-tenancy solution. So it's very smooth and easy to manage. Data can be moved easily and non-disruptively between all nodes in the cluster. Moves are carried out over the cluster interconnect. So again, that solves the problem that 7Mode had, where you could move data to different disks on the same controller, but not really to the other controller or to different systems. That limitation is removed with clustered on tap. You can move it anywhere in the entire cluster, on the same node, or to its HA pair, or to any of the other nodes, any of the other controllers as well. For the performance, data processing is spread throughout the different nodes in the cluster. So you're going to spread your data throughout the different nodes. You can have different models of controller in your cluster as well. So you could have some all flash FAS for your high performance workloads. You could have some normal FAS systems for maybe a workload that needs more capacity, but it doesn't need the performance. It's very easy to place both the actual data and the client connections where they will be served best. The system provides linear performance scaling and load balancing across the cluster. So if you've got two nodes right now, and then you add an additional two nodes, you're going to get double the performance and the capacity if you use the same models. And data can be mirrored or cached across multiple nodes in the cluster. So you can see that it does solve all of those scalability issues that we had with seven mode okay so that's it that was the cluster data on tap now known as simply on tap hardware architecture see you in the next lecture thanks for watching if you want to get hands-on practice with netapp storage you can download my free how to build a NetApp Lab for free ebook. It's got full step-by-step -step instructions on how to build a complete NetApp Lab. And best of all, you can run it all for free on your laptop. And if you want to get my complete NetApp course, which covers everything you need to know about NetApp storage, you can check out the other video that you can see here too. Thanks.